Welcome back to the presentation on fundamentals of tooth preparation. This is part 7. In this part we are going to see about the removal of infected dentin and old restorative material. If you are a dental student or a dentist watching this video kindly consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. As we know, tooth preparation can be divided into two stages, the initial stage and the final stage. We have already seen about the initial stage of tooth preparation. Today we will move on to the final stage of tooth preparation. The first step in the final stage of tooth preparation is removal of any remaining infected dentin or old restorative material. So the step states that we have to remove any infected dentin or old restorative material that are remaining after initial stage of tooth preparation. Although the step states of two different factors that is the infected dentin and old restorative material but if you look into the details we have to consider removal of three factors. That includes the removal of enamel, pit and fissures, then infected dentin and finally old restorative materials. Enamel pits and fissures are the remnants of the enamel pits which are visible in the occlusal surface. So if you are clinically examining a tooth, there can be enamel pits and fissures on the occlusal surface of posterior teeth. Sometimes these pits and fissures will extend deep inside the tooth. Even after the initial tooth preparation, we may be able to see the remnants of these pits and fissures occasionally in the floor of the cavity preparation. Frequently, we may be able to see one or two dots of the areas that is the enamel pits which will be visible. If such a situation occurs, we can remove only those pits locally. We can scoop out those areas without affecting the remainder of the areas because the remaining areas will be sound. But sometimes what happens is the two pits which will be visible on the floor could be connected by a fissure of a decay. If such a situation occurs, then we may have to remove the entire fissure completely by deepening the entire cavity preparation. So we have to remove the enamel pits and fissures which may be visible on the floor of the cavity preparation after initial stage of tooth preparation. The second factor that we have to consider removal is the infected dentin. In this picture we can see a clinical appearance of a dental caries. This is what we always see clinically. Histologically if you are examining this dental caries below the clinical dental caries we can see a layer of infected dentin. Infected dentin is rich in microorganisms and whatever the cost the infected dentin must be removed. If we are not removing this infected dentin it may remain there and it may progress as secondary caries. So we should always remove the infected dentin. And below the infected dentin, there is a layer of affected dentin. What is this affected dentin? Affected dentin may be most often free of microorganisms, but it may have got affected by the acid which was released by the microorganisms which was present in the infected dentin. The inorganic components of the affected dentin must be lost. Maybe the hydroxyapatite crystals may be lost, but the collagen fibers in affected dentin will be intact. So while caries removal, we have to remove the bulk of the decay and we have to remove the infected dentin. The affected dentin need not have to be removed. But while caries excavation, how do we know or how to differentiate between infected and affected dentin? Let's see a comparison chart. First factor is the color. The infected dentin can be variable in color but usually it will be brown in color. 
the color of the affected dentin could also be variable sometimes it can be pale sometimes it can be brownish in color again clinically color can never be used as a reliable technique for caries removal the second is a hardness infected dentin will be soft but affected dentin will be harder but compared to that of a sound dentin it will be less harder but compared to infected dentin it will be more hard so clinically hardness can be considered as a reliable way to differentiate between infected and affected dentin the most common way for differentiating between the infected dentin and the affected dentin is by caries detector dye the most commonly used caries detector dye is acid red in propylene glycol if you are applying the caries detector dye on the surface of infected dentin it always gets stained but the affected dentin most often it don't get stained if it gets stained the stained tooth structure have to be removed it gets stained because of the disrupted collagen fibers and this can be partly reliable differentiating infected dentin from affected dentin again if you are considering the presence of the microorganisms in infected dentin microorganisms are present and in affected dentin microorganisms are minimal or absent again clinically it is not possible to detect microorganisms while caries excavation so we can consider that staining and the hardness as a factor while removal of the infected dentin when it is hard it could be most often affected dentin so need not have to be removed the most reliable clinical technique while caries excavation is we have to remove the infected dentin until the dentin hardness approaches to that of normal dentin a question that often arises in the mind of each and every student is even though we have removed the infected dentin and the bulk of the decay in the affected dentin there are chances that there could be some microorganisms what will happen to this microorganisms and will this microorganism will lead to initiation of secondary caries but what happens is after restoring the tooth with a restorative material providing a complete seal this microorganisms which are present in the affected dentin or even in the lower infected dentin by chance if we have left removed without noticing this microorganisms will be deprived of its nutrition and in a short time period they will be eliminated the third factor that needs to be removed is the old restorative material this is applicable only whenever we are going to replace a old restorative material with a new one but this old restorative material need not have to be always removed only in certain specific situation we have to remove it the old restorative material which is remaining on the surface of the tooth might be discolored on top of that if you are doing a restoration we may not be able to bring back the natural aesthetics of the tooth so in those situations we may have to remove the old restoration completely then we have to replace it with a new restoration so the first indication for removal of the old restorative material is if the old restorative material affect negatively the aesthetic result of the new restoration the next factor which influences the removal of old restorative material is the old material may compromise the amount of needed retention for the new restoration for example in this picture we can see that there is a old restorative material if we are going to do a composite restoration on top of this old restorative material the bonding of the composite to the two structure the surface area will be limited because the old restorative material is forming bulk of the floor of this preparation 
In such clinical situations, it is better to remove the old restorative material in order to enhance the retention of the new restorative material. The third factor which determines the removal of the old restorative material is occasionally we may be able to see there could be a radiographic evidence that indicates caries under the old restorative material. Whenever there is any indication of caries below old restorative materials, then the re entire restoration have to be removed and replaced. Because if you are leaving caries below any old restorative material, then it may progress into a secondary caries and it may affect the health of the pulp. The fourth situation which mandates the removal of the old restorative material is the tooth may be symptomatic before treatment. The patient may be giving some signs and symptoms of pulpal damage. If patient gives a history of continuous pain, swelling or any signs of pulpal damage, then the old restoration have to be removed, evaluated and if there are some evidence for pulpal damage, then root canal treatment may be the treatment of choice. The fifth indication for the removal of old restorative material is in the periphery of the old restorative material, we can see the breaches, ditches and the old restorative materials margin may not be intact. In such a situation, it can lead to formation of the secondary caries. In those situations also, we may have to remove the entire restoration and we have to replace it with a new one. Now let's see how we are supposed to remove this decay. We can use the high speed handpiece or a slow speed handpiece or a spoon excavator. Whenever there is a dental caries which is present in the tooth, the enamel caries and the caries which is present in the outer dentin can be removed with the help of an air rotor that is a high speed handpiece. The caries which is present in the inner half of the dentin must be never removed with an air rotor because it might lead to inadvertent pulpal exposure. So the caries which is present in the inner dentin must be removed only with the help of a low speed handpiece that is a micro motor handpiece. Preferably we should use a tungsten carbide burr. The caries which is present close to that of the pulp must be removed with a well controlled hand instrument like a spoon excavator. The usage of high speed or low speed handpiece close to the pulp may lead to iatrogenic pulpal exposure. While caries excavation, we have to be very careful with the following factors. One, if we are using inadequate coolant or if you are applying excessive pressure while cutting with a high speed handpiece, there could be generation of frictional heat. This heat can cause damage to the pulp. By applying excessive force while caries removal with a spoon excavator, microorganisms may be forced to enter inside the pulp through the dentinal tubules. So excessive pressure should never be applied while excavating caries with spoon excavator. There is a common scenario which might cause or which might lead to iatrogenic pulpal exposure. It is the usage of sharp instruments to check whether we have adequately removed caries completely. What happens is, if the amount of remaining dentin, that is the remaining dentin thickness is very less and if you are using a sharp instrument like an explorer and if a heavy force is applied, the explorer may penetrate through the thin dentin which is remaining and it may lead to iatrogenic pulpal exposure. So the floor of the deep cavity preparations should never be checked with the help of a sharp instrument. And even if you are using any instrument, we have to gently probe it without applying any force. So in this part, we have studied 
about two features that is we have to remove the enamored pits and fissures, infected dentine and old restorative material and this can be removed with the help of a high speed handpiece, a low speed handpiece and the hand instrument like a spoon excavator. So that's all about the removal of the infected dentine and old restorative material. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.